Today is the seventh and last sermon that I'm doing in a seven-part sermon series entitled The ABCs of Spiritual Vitality. The ABCs of Spiritual Vitality. You might recall that in the first sermon, we looked at the first letter, the letter A, for acceptance, God's acceptance of us. And we learned in that sermon that because God accepts us, that empowers us to accept Jesus, which in turn empowers us to accept others and to accept ourselves. And then the Sunday after that, we looked at the letter B for balance, a second component of spiritual vitality. And we learned in that sermon that one of the ways that we can build balance in our lives is by taking and finding that quiet time each day to be alone with God and to get clear about our purpose. That that's an important way that we can build balance in our spiritual lives. And then in the next sermon, we looked at the letter C for communication. And we discovered in that sermon that communication is not only important for our personal relationships, but it's also important for our spiritual life and vitality. And you might recall that James offered us three suggestions as to how we could improve our communication. He said that we need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. The Sunday after that, we looked at the fourth component for spiritual vitality represented by the letter D, for discipline. We learned that the Christian life is a disciplined life and that we are called to utilize all those spiritual disciplines that God has given us, such as worship, prayer, scripture reading, Bible study, financial giving, and compassionate serving. And that by utilizing these spiritual disciplines, that helps us to grow in the grace of Jesus Christ and helps us to mature spiritually. The Sunday after that, we looked at the letter E for encouragement. And we learned that we are called to encourage one another and build each other up. And that the church is to be a community of encouragement in which we mutually encourage one another as we journey together in our faith with Jesus Christ. Last week, I shared with you the most challenging component for spiritual vitality, represented by the letter F for forgiveness. We learned that God calls us to exercise forgiveness in all of our relationships and that there's no limit to the amount of forgiveness we're to offer others and that when we forgive others, healing takes place within us. And only God, only God can empower us to forgive others. Today, though, we're going to look at the crowning component of spiritual vitality. And that component is represented by the letter G for gratitude. But before we do so, let's join together in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In some parts of Mexico, hot springs and cold springs are found side by side. And because it's so convenient for the people there, the women often bring their laundry and boil their clothes in the hot springs and then rinse them in the cold ones. Now a tourist who was watching this procedure commented to his Mexican guide and friend, I imagine they think old mother nature is pretty generous to supply them with such ample, clean, hot and cold water here side by side for their free use. The guide replied, no senor, there is much grumbling because she supplies no soap. <laughs> now, in our scripture reading today, we find the Apostle Paul closing his first letter to the young Christian church at Thessalonica. Paul exhorts these young Thessalonian Christians to give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. The church that Paul founded there had really had a difficult time. They had endured great persecution for their faith. If anyone had reason to not be thankful, it would have been the Thessalonian Christians. Some of them had been beaten and imprisoned for their faith. Others of them had had their possessions seized and taken from them. And yet Paul tells them to give thanks in all circumstances. He doesn't tell them to give thanks just when things are going their way or when the circumstances are favorable. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. 
Now, what Paul is asking these young Thessalonian Christians to have is an attitude of gratitude. That's right, an attitude of gratitude. You know, today, more than ever, we need such an attitude. An attitude of gratitude can do three things for us. And I'd like us to briefly take a look at each one. But before we do so, let me remind you, there is a handout that contains today's sermon outline. And I invite you to take it, fill in the blanks, take notes. Consider the difference that gratitude can make in your spiritual walk with Christ. Or if you prefer, you can just follow along with a PowerPoint presentation. Let's begin then with the first point I want to make about gratitude today. First of all, an attitude of gratitude can sweeten the sourest of situations. An attitude of gratitude can sweeten the sourest of situations. There's an old legend that tells of a fruit that can be found on the continent of Africa called the taste berry because it changes a person's taste so that everything becomes sweet and pleasant. Sour fruit, even if eaten several hours after the taste berry, becomes sweet and delicious. Gratitude is the taste berry of Christianity. And when our hearts are filled with gratitude, anything that comes our way can have its sour taste thwarted by this taste berry. Gratitude can help sweeten a sorrowing heart. It can help lighten the burden of an overburdened soul. It can help dispel the disappointed of the lonely and give spiritual strength to the sick. Keep the taste berry of gratitude in your hearts and it will flavor your life even as the taste berry of Africa sweetens the taste for the African. Now, let's be clear. All of us encounter problems from time to time. But an attitude of gratitude can make such problems more palatable. An attitude of gratitude can sweeten the sourest of situations. That's the first point. And that brings us to the second point I want to make about gratitude and the difference it can make in our spiritual lives. Second, an attitude of gratitude can strengthen us to endure the worst of calamities. An attitude of gratitude can strengthen us to endure the worst of calamities. Now, I'm not suggesting that you subscribe to the rose-colored glasses school of thought. We can neither deny nor avoid all difficulties and crises. But neither can we deny God's blessings to us in their many different forms. Friends, family, loved ones. Some of the greatest leaders of the church have known the secret of strength that comes from gratitude to God. Such gratitude has enabled countless saints and martyrs to face sufferings, persecutions, disease, and even death with dauntless courage. You know, in just a few moments... We are going to be singing the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, which was written by Martin Rinkhart. Martin Rinkhart, who was born in Eilenburg, Germany, in April of 1586, 40 years after Martin Luther's death. His hymn has been called the German Te Deum and is considered by many to be second only among German hymns to the Reformer's magnificent a mighty fortress is our God. Rinkhart was a minister of the gospel in the city of Eilenburg during the terrible Thirty Years' War. Eilenburg was a walled town and therefore a place of refuge for thousands who had lost everything in the war. The overcrowded conditions of the city brought famine and pestilence. At one time, Rinkhart was the only minister in the city. Now, to serve thousands suffering from disease and dying from hunger was a Herculean task. You know, often he performed from 40 to 50 funerals a day. At last, the number of dead each day was so great that it became impossible to bury them individually. So they were interred in groups in trenches. Altogether, 8,000 people died in Eilenburg during this time, 
including Rinkhart's wife. At the same time, Rinkhart was never properly paid by the authorities of the city for his unselfish and tireless efforts in behalf of the sick and the dying. And yet, during this terrible time, he wrote that wonderful hymn of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord, Now Thank We All Our God. In just a few moments, as you sing that hymn, I want you to think about all that Martin Rinkhart suffered. And yet, despite all of that, he was still able to write that wonderful hymn and a praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. Now thank we all our God. You see, an attitude of gratitude can also strengthen us to endure the worst of calamities. And that brings us to the third and final point I want to make about gratitude and the difference it can make for our spiritual life. Third and finally, an attitude of gratitude can help us find something good in even the most miserable of circumstances. An attitude of gratitude can help us find something good in even the most miserable of circumstances. Even in the worst of situations, we can find good things from God for which we can be thankful. An attitude of gratitude can open our eyes to see those good things and enrich not only our lives, but the lives of others in the process. A heart filled with gratitude is worth much more than gold because it discovers great treasures all around that others miss. Such an attitude can open up the treasures of God's grace that we would otherwise overlook. I want to close this last illustration. Henry Ward Beecher. Henry Ward Beecher, the famous 19th century preacher, leaves us with an illustration of the heart of gratitude that's well worth pondering. I want you to listen very carefully to this quote. He says, and I quote, If one should give me a dish of sand, a dish of sand, and tell me there are particles of iron in it, I might look for them with my eyes and search for them with my clumsy fingers and be able to detect them. But let me take a magnet and sweep through it, and now would it draw to itself the almost invisible particles by the mere power of attraction. The unthankful heart, like my finger in the sand, detects no mercies. But let the thankful heart sweep through the day, and as the magnet finds the iron, so will it find in every hour some heavenly blessings. Only the iron in God's sand is gold. Only the iron in God's sand is gold. Thankful hearts can help us to discover the treasures of God's mercies present in each day. Have you discovered those treasures? They're available when we open our hearts and allow the gratitude to God to come in. Well, in conclusion, in conclusion, an attitude of gratitude can do three things. An attitude of gratitude can sweeten the sourest of situations. It can strengthen us to endure the worst of calamities. And it can help us find something good in even the most miserable of circumstances. Whoever has the ears to hear, let that one hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. <laughs>